at the second time. In accordance with the rules of procedure, the debate is now adjourned and the bill is referred to the House Committee. One more in- we now resume the second reading, debate on the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014. President, Mr. Albert Chen, Mr. Deputy, may I ask for a quorum count, please?
审议上述条例草案嘅。Mr. Kenneth Leung, Chairman of the Bills Committee on the above bill, will address the Council on the Committee's report. Honourable Kenneth Leung. President, in my capacity as Chairman of the Bills Committee on Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014, I now address the Council on the work of the Bills Committee. The Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014. Seeks to amend the Inland Revenue Ordinance to give effect to the proposals concerning tax concessions in the 2014-2015 budget. These proposals include increasing the dependent parent and grandparent allowances, as well as the additional dependent parent and grandparent allowances, from $38,000 to $40,000. For each eligible parent or grandparents aged 60 or above, and from $19,000 to $20,000 for each eligible parent or grandparent aged between 55 and 59. Next, raising the deduction ceiling for elderly residential care expenses under salaries tax. And tax under personal assessment, from seventy-six thousand dollars to eighty thousand dollars for each eligible parent or grandparent. And finally, reducing salaries tax, tax under personal assessment, and profits tax for the year of assessment two o one three to two o one four, by seventy-five percent, subject to a ceiling of ten thousand dollars per case. Acting President, the Bills Committee has held one meeting with the administration to scrutinise the bill, and has invited the public and the district councils to provide views in writing, but has not received any submission. The Bills Committee supports the bill. During the deliberations, the Bills Committee has examined the rationales for the tax concession proposals. And their financial implications. The bills committee notes that the proposed increases in allowances and deduction ceiling, aimed at alleviating taxpayers' burden in maintaining dependent parents and grandparents, whereas the proposed one-off reduction of salaries tax, tax under personal assessment, and profits tax for the year of assessment 2013 to 2014. Is one of the counter-cyclical one-off relief measures in the 2014-15 budget. According to the administration, about 550,000 taxpayers will benefit from the proposed increases in allowances and deduction ceiling, and the revenue for Gorn is estimated to be about $300 million a year. As for the proposed one-off tax reduction, about 1.74 million taxpayers and 126,000 tax-paying companies will benefit, and the revenue for Gorn is about 10.2 billion. The bills committee notes that a married couple who receives employment income may elect to be jointly assessed. If the election can reduce the overall tax liability, at the request of the bills committee, the administration has provided information on overseas jurisdictions in respect of the adoption of joint assessment arrangements for taxpayers. The administration has also provided statistics on the election of joint assessment under salaries tax, and on the election of personal assessment. In the past three years, Section Three of the proposed Schedule Thirty One to the Inland Revenue Ordinance, under Clause Seven of the Bill, also seeks to provide an additional ground for taxpayers to apply for holding over payment of provisional salaries tax in the year of assessment two thousand one four one five, if the taxpayer is entitled to a deduction for elderly residential care expenses. That is likely to exceed seventy-six thousand dollars in that year of assessment. In examining this provision, I have suggested to the administration that 
instead of enacting similar transitional provisions, each time adjustments are made to the deduction items. The administration should consider introducing a standing provision in the ordinance to include entitlement to deductions exceeding a certain amount as a ground for application for holding over payment of provisional salaries tax. And the administration, I noted, agrees to give consideration to this suggestion. The Bills Committee has not proposed committee stage amendments to the Bill and supports the resumption of the second reading debate on the Bill. Mr Acting President, I have a few personal suggestions and observations on our internal revenue system. Of course, some of these observations have been briefly mentioned in the above report. I will though cover those items in more detail below. During the deliberation of the Bills Committee stage, I have also inquired the administration whether a two-tier profit tax rate is possible. That is, a standard profit tax rate of 16.5% for the general corporations and a reduced rate, say for example, a 10% profit tax rate for the SMEs. Well, how to define the SMEs properly will be based on turnover or chargeable profits of the SME concern. Unfortunately, and regrettably, the administration has replied that since profits tax is the biggest source of government revenue, such revenue, such suggestions would require careful examination. Now, taking regard into such factors as the fairness principle, the financial implication to the government, and the susceptibility of such a two-tier profits tax system, thus calling for anti-avoidance provisions which would inevitably complicate the existing simple tax regime, the administration is quite unwilling to take into consideration the suggestion. The administration has also pointed out that in recent years, only around 90,000 of the some 900,000 registered corporations have to pay profits tax based on the assessable profits, indicating that Hong Kong's tax base is already narrow. With due respect, I do think that the revenue foregone by adopting a two-tier profits tax system is marginal because by so doing, Mr. Acting President, you will also attract new business and enterprises to set up new businesses in Hong Kong. And if such revenue foregone is so marginal, then the argument that the profits tax is a major source for Hong Kong revenue should not stand. And in fact, by adopting a two-tier profits tax rate, Mr. President, it shows to the business world at large that we are concerned with promoting the competitiveness of our business and the competitiveness of our tax system. And I do urge the government in the next budget to seriously consider my proposal. My next observation, Mr. President, is about the joint assessment under salaries tax system. Mr. President, as we note that a married couple who receives employment income is assessed normally under salaries tax as separate individuals. However, they may elect to be jointly assessed if the election can reduce their overall tax liability. For example, if the husband and or the wife of a married couple have income that is chargeable to profits tax and a property tax, the married couple may elect for also personal assessment to reduce their tax liability. But separate taxation for the couple is not applicable under personal assessment. During the scrutiny of the bill, Mr. President, I have asked for the information relating to a number of jurisdictions whereby the joint taxation system is in place. Indeed, out of the 20 very developed economies ranging from Australia to Italy to the United States, only about seven jurisdictions do adopt a joint assessment system for husband and wife. 
Mr. President, the reason why I asked for whether a joint assessment system exists in some of these economies is not much because um, I want to reform our fiscal system. It is in the fact that the principle of equality, equality of sexes, which is the rationale of my question. Although husband and wives do form a family unit, but I do think the fiscal matters for husbands and wives should be segregated and separated. Now, by adopting a joint assessment system, I would urge also the Commissioner and the Secretary concerned to examine whether this arrangement would have infringed the Family Status Discrimination Ordinance and the Sex Discrimination Ordinance. In fact, the reason why a number of jurisdictions have reformed the personal tax system from a household basis to an individual basis is also based on the equality of sex principle. On top of that, of course, that is the data privacy principle that need to be observed. And I would urge the Secretary, therefore, to examine whether our current system for assessment for salaries tax for couples really reflect the social value which our society currently adores. Mr. President, I would urge the parties and my colleagues across the spectrum to support this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Albert Chan, Mr. Deputy, uh, I, uh, is, I need a uh, call for quorum.
。王国兴议员 ，Mr. 王国兴。Uh, the bell is still ringing, Mr. Wong Kok Heng. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I rise to speak on the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014. I want to express uh, views of the FTU. In this bill, in respect of the 2013 to 14, uh, there will be a a reduce uh, reduction and a tax re a rebate of uh, seventy five percent, subject to a ceiling of ten thousand uh, dollar per case. For the for workers, generally speaking, uh, wage increase is not able to catch up with price increases. Whether we're talking about transport, food, and other commodities, FTU would like the administration to. Consider our views next year, and that is for the rebate should be reduced by fifty percent. So instead of uh, seventy-five percent, it should be one hundred percent, subject to a ceiling of fifteen thousand dollars per case. So if one pays fifteen thousand dollars or less. There's no tax payable. I hope uh, the administration can seriously consider this proposal from the FTU. As for supporting parents, dependent parents and grandparents, and also the uh, allowance for residential, elderly residential care expenses, although there are the deductions, but uh, the amount is too small. And it doesn't li really live up to the uh, spirit of respecting our elderly people. In our discussion with the administration, I told uh, the FS personally my views. I criticized the deductions as something neither here nor there. It's too weak. Even if you eat a, a bowl of congee, it may cost you ten dollars, and then the de deduction will be something like th like this. In this bill, if a taxpayer provides for the uh, elderly residential care expenses. The increase is from uh, seventy six thousand to eighty thousand dollars, so it's a uh, ten point nine five dollars per day. So it's just a little bit more than what it would cost uh, for a bowl of congee. If you support a dependent parent or grandparents who is between the age of uh, fifty to fifty five to fifty nine. The allowance would be would go up from nineteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars. That is an increase of one thousand dollars. That means on a daily basis, two point seven three dollars, one quarter of a, of the cost of a bowl of congee. Isn't that uh, too little? And if you will look at uh, the uh, allowance for supporting dependent parents, additional allowance for. Dependent parents and grandparents is uh, going to increase from thirty eight thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars or five point four seven dollars per day. Uh, that's the cost of half a bowl of plain congee. So that's the kind of uh, allowance increases under the Bill is so meager that it's just uh, uh, only better than nothing. So please listen to the FTU. In the next budget, please increase the allowances to a greater extent. Don't be so mean, because uh, what you are 
proposing goes against the spirit of、uh, caring and、uh, respecting our elders. Although we、uh, have、uh, some views on the bill,、uh, we have no choice but to support its passage, because、uh, there is a backlog、uh, in the FC. Seventy-six items are in are waiting to be cleared. Forty-one、uh, will be for the、uh, benefits of uh, different uh, social strata. So many people suffer from the delay, and、uh, people would、uh, have to get wait until the, the approval is given for the double pay for CSSA, OAA, and DA recipients. We will, and we don't know whether the、uh, doubling of the value of a medical、uh, voucher will be realized, and also civil servants are waiting for their、uh, pay increase to be approved. So I hope this bill can be、uh, enacted、uh, as and implemented as soon as possible. I hope、uh, next year the government uh, would uh, do this quick quicker, so that we don't have to wait for the、uh, FC to clear the bad law before we can see real improvements.、Yeah. Mr. Sun Chung Kai, in this bill, a few. Proposals are there.、Uh, there is、uh, the increase of allowance. Sorry, Mr. Albert Chen, can I please ask for a quorum count?
Sin Jong Kai Yun. Mr. Sin Jong Kai. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. In this bill, the administration, sorry, proposes some allowances and some reductions. The DP doesn't have a lot of views about it. In fact, the administration always does the same things. This year, it increases the allowances for parents and grandparents. Last year, it did so for children. When the administration answered our questions at the bills committee, we asked, uh, uh, what is the frequency for the review of allowances? Do you have a formula? What is the baseline for review? We asked a whole series of questions, but they were not answered by the Bureau. We have many different kinds of allowances, but nobody knows when they are reviewed, when they will be increased, and uh, as and when they like it. They would do it for children or for parents, and sometimes they may provide reduction for uh, personal assessment, etc. When the Bureau Secretary replies to members' points, I'd like him to tell us whether they have a policy. Maybe they say, my policy is to do whatever I like. But is that a reasonable policy? Because we really cannot see what the logic is for the administration sometimes to propose this increase and that decrease. Today, uh, this year, you provide $2,000 more for the allowance for supporting parents. That may be a way for you to catch up with inflation. But what's about personal emolument and uh, personal assessment, etc.? We don't know the rationale for such proposals. As for reducing salaries tax by 75%, I think it is a kind of relief measures. I don't have a lot to say about that because it doesn't have a big impact on the fiscal health of the government. Rather, I'm concerned about the formula behind such increases or decreases and when a review is made, uh, do you have a policy for it? If you go by a cycle of parents and then children and then parents and if you do it once every three years, then at least you tell me the pattern, the policy. Um, and, and we can discuss that, but it seems there is no policy, no system, no rationale. I hope the Bureau Secretary will explain all that in his speech. Why did he only pick allowances for supporting parents and not others? What factors did you consider in making this move? Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Albert Chan. Mr. Deputy. I um, am not calling for a quorum count. I want to speak on um, this matter. Concerning the uh, Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014, uh, there are a number of um, important aspects. Clause 4, uh, Mr. Albert Chan. Um, please uh, pause, uh, Ms. Uh, An Chang. Yes, uh, Ch um, Mr. Deputy, I would like to um, uh, 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 I would like to uh, have a quorum count. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, um, uh, the more members listening to what I want to say, the better. Uh, please be seated, um, Mr. Albert Chang.
ฉันว่าหยิบยืน Mr. a l b e r t Chan Thank you Mr. Deputy I'm glad that more members have um, come back to listen to what I want to say Concerning the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014 Individuals families parents children and also the profits tax um, some minor adjustments are proposed i think these are merely uh, petty favors and uh, i think um, the amendments uh, lack logic justification and uh, careful thought Now the the FS um in the um, many previous budgets uh, um, made mistakes or committed errors. I, I will not repeat those. But then concerning the uh, taxation arrangements, uh, you can see that um, they are not re reasonable. Now as um, Uh, we have few and few members. I'll follow um, what uh, Ms. Encheng has done. I want Ms. Encheng and the others to come back to this chamber.
Chen Wei Yu. Mr. Albert Chen, thank you, President. President, I said that um, the amendments are illogical. There is a lack of justification, and there is um, no careful thought behind these amendments. These are petty favors, piecemeal uh, improvements. We do not know the rationale and the logic behind on a line of thought behind the amendments. The secretary um, is in control of taxation matters concerning how much tax um, members of the public should pay. And uh, under what circumstances um, taxpayers uh, ca can pay less and uh, under what circumstances uh, rebates can be offered. I think there must be sufficient justifications for such decisions and um, there should be an assessment of the actual situation. Now, in fact, we've asked the administration to explain the rationale behind um, fixing the standard rate uh, of CSSA at $1,600 or $1,700. How much money is needed uh, every month for clothing? How much for food? But for the past two decades, the administration refused to explain the rationale behind um, fixing the standard CSSA rate. Now, uh, for example, in Clause 4, it says uh, concerning salaries tax, profits tax, and tax under personal assessment, um, 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 the, uh, for the year of assessment 2013-2014, there's a reduction of 75% subject to a ceiling of $10,000 per case. So why 75% and why a ceiling of $10,000 per case? It's difficult to understand. In fact, we've asked the administration this question um, many times. And I uh, really hope that Professor Chan can, in his reply, explain to members of the public uh, whether the um, um, rates or the reductions were uh, arbitrary. Now, for example, um, $9.2 billion for salaries tax uh, reduction and then profits tax reduction, uh, $1 billion, so um, a total of 10.2 or 10, about $10 billion. So is it that um, you first of all decide to set aside $10 billion um, for tax reduction and as a result you uh, allocate 90% of this um, to salaries tax and 10% to profits tax. So uh, you um, haven't um, told us the logic. You haven't told us whether you hope to, uh, through the tax reduction, stimulate the economy. So are you trying to stimulate the economy or is it um, um, about um, transfer of um, benefits, um, President. So um, um, we have fewer and fewer members here, and uh, Ms. En Cheng is again uh, not in this chamber. And uh, please, I, I now uh, want a quorum count.
Chen Wei Yi Yuan. Hi, Doctor. Mr. Albert Chen, thank you. Now concerning the minor reductions to the taxes, and I asked about the logic, and I will cite some figures. Concerning the uh, one-off um, tax reduction, 1.74 million taxpayers um, can benefit. But then uh, we're talking about a ceiling of $10,000 per case. So this is equivalent to uh, an annual income of $250,000 because the uh, reduction is 7500 In other words, if you pay $10,000 salaries tax, then you'll be able to get the full benefit. And of course, there are people who do not need to pay tax. And with regard to um, the government's revenue, um, now, some earn uh, $20,000 a month for about $250,000 a year, but some uh, earn over $1 million a year. And uh, these people, I mean the latter, also um, get a reduction of $7,500 in terms of salaries tax. Now, you know, um, uh, there are some who earn a lot of money, they are very rich, and they can um, pay $7,005 less in terms of salaries tax. And then there are some who are barely able to make ends meet. They belong to the middle class or the sandwich class, and they uh, also get $7,500 and not more. So concerning how you um, uh, distribute and redistribute um public resources. Um, do you have some logic in mind? Do you have certain beliefs or convictions in mind? The government um, manages public finances. How can you make sure that um, tax burdens are reasonably uh, um, allocated or distributed so that um, people's tax burdens uh, will not um, be aggravated. Say I earn $20,000 a month and then another person earns $100,000 a month and uh, both of us um, get a reduction of $7,500. So um, what benefit do I, do I get? And concerning the ten billion dollars, now um, if you um, do not uh, offer tax reductions, you use the ten billion dollars as um, public expenditure. Then, um, if you if you do this, uh, if you invest the money in education, in uh, medical services, then maybe um, um, the public in general can stand to benefit more. The middle class may stand to benefit more than um, those uh, high income earners. But as I said, there, there's a lack of logic, a lack of justifications, lack of um, careful thought. And I think this um, 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 controller, uh, this financial controller really should be uh, fired. Uh, and. And concerning those um, low-income earners, those earning $20,000 a month, yes, we welcome tax concessions uh, for them. But then uh, for the high-income earners, the wealthy, um, it's um, tantamount to transfer of benefits if they also get the $7,500 reduction. And then concerning the um, profits tax reduction, of course, we object to that. Um, you know, um, this reduction um, is really a very small amount to these uh, companies or their subsidiaries. $7,500 may not be enough to buy a bottle of red wine. So, in fact, the money um, uh, should have been um, um, 
uh, used as public expenditure, and 126,000 um, companies stand to benefit, and one company may own a number of subsidiaries. And so, um, ultimately, um, the companies which benefit most are the big consortia. So, with regard to salaries tax and profits tax concessions, um, um, the government may tell us that um, um, the general public uh, benefit, but in fact, uh, only the richest people um, benefit um, the most. And then uh, Clause 5, Schedule 3C, concerning the um, deduction ceiling for elderly residential care expenses under salaries tax and tax under personal assessment raised from $76,000 to $80,000 for each eligible parent or grandparent. And I think um, uh, uh, um, I think it's right to throw eggs at the financial secretary. We should have, uh, the elderly um, persons should have thrown eggs at the FS. It's a mere increase of $4,000. The FS is um, generous to himself, to the big consortia, uh, but then he is known as a, uh, well known as a Scrooge. He is so miserly towards elderly persons. Uh, the deduction ceiling for elderly residential care expenses um, will be raised from $76,000 to $80,000. I will be pointing out how ridiculous the proposed adjustments are. I m must um, point these out, or uh, um, uh, the government will uh, claim that um, uh, I have um, uh, 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 forgone um, $10 billion of revenue, M millions of people will benefit, and then um, um, elderly persons will benefit a lot. You know, um, uh, Siwa Leung in his um, re um, report of the uh, um, ter present term of government um, has claimed that um, uh, improvements to library services are, are also his achievements, achievements made during his term of office. And so the FS can claim that he has um, done something for the elderly. A mere increase in the deduction ceiling of $4,000. What is the significance? So please do not let him pull wool over your eyes. Please do not be misled into believing that he really cares for the grassroots. And then, President, concerning this um, uh, uh, deduction ceiling for elderly residential care expenses to be raised to $80,000, this is not enough. Um, uh, um, so, what is the, the government's assessment concerning the uh, monthly expenses? If it's about six thousand dollars per month, then um, we should be talking about seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year. But is this assessment real and realistic? Ask the elderly persons how much uh, RCHEs charge them, secretary. Can you find an RCHE which uh, charges only five to six thousand dollars a month? Um, RCHEs which provide a decent um, service um, charge at least eight to ten thousand dollars a month. And then, um, of course, there are some uh, elderly persons who are on CSSA and, and they can only um, uh, get a living space of four feet. Uh, uh, four uh, feet times six feet. They can't see the sun. They can't see the sky. I'll supplement later. Does any other member wish to speak? Does any other member wish to speak?
Chen Chichun. Mr. Chen Chichun. Thank you, President. We always uh, say that the FS is a scooch. We say the government doesn't know the pain suffering by our people in uh, setting the tax allowances. They are divorced from the reality in the community. In the budget debate, I raised a question of the FS. I said, FS, do you know how heavy was the weight of a lunchbox? Um, I don't expect him to take the box, the lunchbox, uh, to a uh, weight. I ask, how much uh, scrap paper and cartoon uh, would uh, an elderly person be uh, collecting before he, he can uh, exchange it for the uh, money needed for a lunchbox? It would be my body weight. I want to talk about Clause 5, uh, Schedule 3C Amended, Elderly Residential Care Expenses Deduction. I agree with Mr. Albert Chen that the allowance is only going to be increased by $4,000. We are uh, in a, the second reading debate. You should be speaking on the bill as a whole. We are not in the CSA stage. So you mean I don't need to go to the details? This is a second reading debate in in respect of the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014. Every member has to has a 15 minutes to speak on the entire bill. All right, let's uh, have I will now have a call for quorum before I uh, decide how to proceed.
Chen Chi-Chun Yu. Mr. Chen Chi-Chun, thank you, President. I thank you for your reminder that we are in a second reading debate. We're not in the CSA stage. I use the example of uh, elderly residential care expenses deduction because I want to say that when the administration proposes uh, measures to increase uh, deductions, allowances, or tax rebates, well, there's no logic here. We don't know what they are trying to achieve and who are they trying to help, and whether these people can be really helped. Uh, this is uh, the Indian Revenue Amendment Bill 2014. Well, it's uh, full of half measures. All right. Uh, the deduction for elderly residential care expenses would go up by uh, $4,000. I don't know whether the secretary or FS has to support uh, any parent. They are paid two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars a month. You are not middle class. Don't claim to be middle class people. You are the uh, elite, and you are going to get a very small benefit out of the inc increase in uh, deduction. So to you, it's just nothing. You are paid two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars a month. Is much is enough for you to support your parents. But for the middle class people, they have to pay for the uh, residential care expenses of their parents. Take me as an example. I'm paying more than ten thousand dollars to the maintain my mother. My father has passed away. It's uh, a heavy burden. Don't think that we are paying eighty thousand dollars a month is nothing. And even for a place in an RCHE that that cost me ten or thousand dollars is not a, a very quality, a very good uh, and quality uh, place. So People Power has been saying that uh, the most effective way is to give a cash rebate. And if you have to, to maintain both parents, you you already find it very hard to do this. And maybe if you have siblings, you, you you have to share the responsibility with uh, your siblings, and uh, of course, uh, there's no deduction for if you have to hire a foreign domestic helper to take care of your parents. As for the tax allowance, uh, it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars. It means that if you are paid ten thousand dollars a month, you have to pay tax. How much is ten thousand dollars? You have to pay for your expenses, and you can cut. You can make the calculations yourself. Unless you live in a PLH flat, and you pay a, a low rent in the community. Some uh, people have been talking about the kind of income you must have before you can live alone. Ten thousand dollars? No. In uh, if you live in a subdivided flat in Causeway Bay, how much does it does it cost? More than eight thousand dollars for a subdivided unit. Well, if you earn ten thousand dollars a month. Uh, you should count yourself lucky. If you are not a street sleeper, you have to live with your parents. Many people have written to us uh, asking for uh, uh, for another PRH flat uh, because they don't want to live with their 
parents, they don't have any the privacy. So one hundred twenty thousand dollars is an, an an unreasonable allowance. Uh, if we look at census and statistics uh, figures in two thousand nine, uh, the average income is uh, thirteen thousand dollars. So if you earn uh, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, you you can't have your ends meet unless they have other sources of income. But uh, it doesn't come free of tax unless you have to support your parents. Well, it, it would help if your parents have uh, their own income, and then uh, they will allow you to claim the uh, allowance for supporting parents. For those who who's just earning a little bit more than uh, the uh, tax allowance, you know, young people have to repay their loans that uh, after graduation, and then uh, their income is just over the tax allowance and they have to pay tax. Uh, that's why people young people are so keen to get a job that they that uh, no tax will be payable and it would be best if they can uh, get a PRH threat. Some employees ask their bosses not to give them uh, a raise in salary because uh, if they get a raise they cannot uh, be eligible for PRH. If uh, there's a promotion uh, opportunity they would rather pass it off. If you look at the medium income, $11,500. I think at least uh, the basic allowance should, should be packed with this uh, medium income level. In order to make it meaningful, I would suggest that the basic allowance should be two hundred and forty thousand dollars, and then you only have to pay tax if you earn twenty thousand dollars or more per month. Uh, for married persons, uh, the allowance is two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Well, when I when it comes to married cop married persons allowance, uh, let me. Uh, Say something you don't. It's it's a. Uh, it must be a heterosexual a married couple. There's no allowance for same-sex uh, couple. I don't know why the administration has uh, failed to en enact a piece of legislation on same-sex marriage so far. Because uh, if uh, we have th that kind of uh, law. People may challenge the uh, government for not giving them the same married person's allowance. I don't know whether it would be a, a breach of the uh, principle of fairness and equality. I think uh, short of a marriage uh, f uh, legislation for same-sex couples, there should, uh, some have, we should have something called like a civil uh, union or partnership. Law for same-sex couples. Paying tax is what uh, people contribute to the community. If you are able to earn a certain uh, level of uh, income, you should uh, pay tax. So why can't the same-sex couples be eligible to the same amount of uh, tax allowance, like? Uh, Heterosexual married persons. For married persons, the allowance is the two hundred forty thousand dollars. So it means a twenty thousand dollars a month. If one of them works, uh, living expenses are so high, rent is high. The, it's uh, difficult. I think the census and statistics departments uh, have only got the old data in two thousand and nine for two person household. The expenditure level is a eighteen thousand dollars. So, if you earn twenty thousand uh, dollars, you are almost almost always in the red. Uh, 
I've got some time left, so I have to talk about allowance for supporting parents. Again, this is uh, just uh, nominal uh, allowance or, or deduction for those over uh, for parents over the year uh, over sixty years of uh, age. The uh, allowance would uh, be in would be increased to forty thousand dollars. It's just a petty favor. Apart from a tax a tax rebate to the middle class, where the increase in the parent allowance uh, can uh, help. Uh, in my case, uh, I let my sister uh, claim the parent allowance. If there are more than uh, if there are many siblings, uh, you have to fight uh, for the right to claim the allowance. But we cannot really divide the allowance. I pay three thousand dollars to my mother, and uh, my sibling pay six thousand to my father. Uh, maybe we should share the parent allowance. Well, the uh, transaction cost or administrative cost is uh, disproportionately high. So we should uh, let uh, the sibling with the. Uh, Lowers uh, mean to, to claim the parent allowance. For middle class people, how much would uh, they be paying their parent or parents a month to support them? If we, well, at least a five thousand dollars. If uh, that's all they have got to to lead. To meet their expenses, so at least a year you need to pay your parents sixty thousand dollars. The allowance is uh, just two thirds of that amount, forty thousand dollars. Is the government uh, of the view that uh, paying your parent uh, five thousand dollars is too much? You just need to pay each parent three thousand three hundred dollars. There's so many uh, instances that I can uh, refer to to illustrate my points. Well, it, you may think that uh, those who can afford to pay tax uh, are not uh, grassrooters. Uh, the allowance uh, or the increases in allowance and deductions uh, are supposed to help them. But uh, such a small uh, increase is not helpful. Don't just uh, increase the allowances by uh, two hundred or two thousand. Uh, it's just a nominal gesture. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, I will now call upon the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury to reply. The debate will come to a close after the Secretary has replied. Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. Mr. President, I'd like to thank Mr. Kenneth Lang, the chairman of the Bills Committee, and also members of the committee, as well as the Secretariat, for working so hard so that the scrutiny work has been completed. I'd like to thank members for supporting the Inner Revenue Amendment Bill 2014 and your support for the resumption of second reading debate, and so that the uh, measures proposed in the bill can be implemented as soon as possible. The purpose of the bill is to amend the Inland Revenue Ordinance so as to implement the concessionary revenue measures for the 2014-2015 financial year. And um, we are also having provisions to provide for transitional matters. In order to lessen the burden of um, taxpayers, the bill proposes that from the 2014-2015 year of assessment uh, onwards, the um, dependent parent or grandparent allowance um, under salaries tax and tax under personal assessment uh, be increased. And the additional allowance um, for um, um, living with these um, um, dependents throughout the year uh, will also be increased. So for each eligible parent or grandparent aged 60 or above, the allowance 
and the additional allowance will be increased from $38,000 to $40,000. And if the um, parent or the um, grandparent is from 55 to 59 years old, then the um, allowance and the additional allowance uh, will be increased from $19,000 to $20,000. And for um, parents and grandparents in uh, residential care homes for the elderly, the bill proposes that a deduction ceiling for elderly residential care be increased from $76,000 to $80,000 per eligible dependent. And for these um, allowances and also uh, the increase in allowances, um, in, uh, the raising of deduction ceilings, uh, 550,000 taxpayers will benefit and uh, um, the annual revenue uh, will be uh, reduced by $300 million. And in the 2014-2015 um, budget, um, counter cyclical one-off relief measure um, are proposed, including uh, what is pro um, proposed in the bill. In other words, reducing salaries tax and tax on the personal assessment and profits tax for the year of assessment 2013-2014 by 75%, subject to a ceiling of $10,000. These tax concessionary measures will benefit 1.74 million taxpayers and 126,000 companies and unincorporated businesses which um, need to pay tax. And uh, the government's revenue will be reduced by $10.2 billion. Uh, some members asked why we can't allow um, um, the um, husband and the wife to um, apply for um, personal tax assessment. Uh, under the present arrangement, um, they, they can elect for joint uh, assessment. Um, the uh, personal assessment is not a tax in itself, but then for those who need to pay salaries tax, property tax, and um, profits tax, um, the personal assessment arrangement can um, offer some concessions. And so the IRD will assess each and every personal assessment application to ascertain whether the taxpayers' tax burdens can be lessened. And if taxpayers can elect to um, individually or jointly apply for personal assessment if we allow the um, loss of um, one spouse um, uh, um, to offset the uh, income of um, the other spouse, then uh, the, the uh, tax system will become very complicated and um, there will be uh, an increased risk of tax avoidance. And then concerning the tax rate for SMEs, now at the moment, about 90% of the companies, uh, mainly SMEs, do not need to pay tax. And of the 95,000 companies which need to pay tax, about 57% of them, um, on the average, pay one off amount of $2,500. Um, without the uh, tax concession provided for in this bill. And if we um, have um, tax rates uh, divided into uh, different bands, then the tax regime will become uh, more complicated. And also, uh, uh, people may say that the um, uh, drawing of the bands may be arbitrary. So um, we have chosen to adopt um, simple and one-off um, relief measures to respond to the demands of the business sector. Some members have asked us um, about the justifications and the rationale behind these uh, relief measures. In putting together the 2014-2015 budget, the FS widely uh, consulted the views of different sectors and different views were uh, received. Uh, for example, um, tax deductions um, were proposed um, for different items, but then uh, it may not be possible for us to respond to all the demands made. But then um, the uh, government has launched some recurrent measures to help 
the poor and the needy, and we have taken into account the fiscal position of um, the year and also the inflation rate in the coming year. And so the financial secretary has decided to opt for um, uh, simpler and one-off measures of um, increasing the allowance um, to help um, the public. So I hope that members can pass the bill so that we can implement these measures as soon as possible. I now put the question to you, and that is that the Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2014 be read the second time. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those again? Mr. Albert Chen claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
Party Bill. Voting begins. Please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed and the results are displayed. The results are 49 members present, 45 for, 3 against, no abstention. The question is agreed by a majority of members present. I declare the motion passed. In the Revenue Amendment Bill 2014, committee stage, council is now in committee. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the following clauses stand part of the Inner Revenue Amendment Bill 2014.